Now, the first Oslo Accord, known as Oslo One, was signed on September 13, 1993. That's 30 years ago today. That agreement between the Israeli government, led by Prime Minister Rabin, and Palestinian Liberation Organization, led by Arafat, saw each side recognize each other for the first time and also pledged to end their decades-long conflict. Now, in the years around the signing of that accord, it felt like a major historical milestone. Yet it did face significant and powerful detractors on each side, elements within both societies that were adamantly opposed to peace with the other, that eventually derailed it with violence. And since that time in the mid-90s, the horizon of real hope and optimism that emerged from Oslo feels like a distant memory or just a historical footnote if you're under 40 or so. And we haven't come close to anything like it in 30 years, but we're joined by a special guest today to get more into this, former Justice Minister and Initiator and Negotiator of the Oslo Accords, Yossi Valen. So thanks for joining us here. Look, I opine here with it, the tone of lost potential, you know, fallen hopes, but how do you see it? Did the detractors prove too powerful or were there fatal flaws in the accord from the beginning? Well, the, the main problem is that uh, Oslo failed to achieve its uh, main goal. We had to uh, a deadline for a permanent agreement by May the 4th, 1999, and nothing happened on that day or later on. So we are stuck with an interim agreement, which did not mean, uh, mean to prevail for, or, uh, f for five years, uh, for, for 30 years, uh, but for five years. And uh, of course, the expectation for such, from such an agreement, an interim agreement, uh, to behave like a permanent agreement are totally false. I think that uh, the, the bottom line is that uh, the extremists on both sides were ready to uh, use the worst means in order to thwart the agreement uh, that we signed and uh, even uh, risk and, and sacrifice their lives in order to do that and to, uh, uh, of course, kill uh, others. And that is the main reason why we don't have a, an agreement. I think that both sides were sincere at, at the beginning, they wanted very much to, to have a peace, each side from its own national interests. I, I think that we, we found a real partners on the Palestinian side uh, in our talks in Oslo. I believe that uh, it was mutual. I think that uh, saying that uh, we don't have partners uh, is false, is wrong, and only those who don't want to talk are saying that the other side is not the partner. And I believe that it is still possible to get back to peace because this is the national interest of the Palestinians who need self-determination and the Israeli side which needs a, a Jewish and democratic uh, state and needs an eastern border. And I believe that the, the way to do it today if there is a, 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 a willing party in Israel, a willing government in Israel, which I doubt regretfully, but in the, in the near future when this uh, government is not in power, I think that the most important thing would be to create a structure like a confederation which will allow Israelis uh, to live uh, on the Palestinian side uh, without evacuating them uh, from the new Palestinian state. Yeah. And the same number of Palestinians would be allowed to Israel as a permanent uh, resident of, uh, one of the one of the most heated points of contention in all this, of course, the, the people, the refugees and that. Look, I've heard others, you know, significant figures from the time talk about this. Former ambassadors Martin Indyk, uh, Dennis Ross, you know, saying that the U.S. at the time was kind of blindsided by this agreement, you know, directly made between the Palestinians and the Israelis, that the U.S. had been working on a Syria deal at the time. But was there a, a failing there? You know, is it important to have that major your international sort of locutor to be part of this, to make sure it happens, to, to make a, a, a road map, as, as that term has been used before? Or can we really do this one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with the Palestinians? What's your read on how it needs to be done? I believe that the, the, our joint uh, main mistake was not to go directly to the permanent agreement and to allow these four, uh, five years, which uh, seemed to us a long while, now it is 30 years, uh, to the lunatics and the extremists to do whatever they could in order to torpedo uh, peace between the parties, because peace means a partition of the land. 
And uh, both of them, uh, I mean, the extremists believe that it is God-given, it is waqf or, or sacred uh, land, and that they are not allowed even to uh, compromise on such a land. This was the main mistake. Had we gone directly to the permanent agreement, it could have been difficult to implement it immediately. But still, it was much better than allowing the oppositions on both sides, the, the militant oppositions, to prevent us from achieving our goals. Mr. For over these 30 years, we've seen a lot of types of government in Israel. Uh, you could argue everyone's had their turn in power in some ways, but uh, what would it take now to see the revival, you know, to bring back almost from the dead this, this peace camp that was so dominant in the 90s? The peace camp is there. I mean, the voters for the peace camp, you, you may meet them every Saturday in the demonstrations, most of them. Are, are part of the democratic liberal uh, uh, camp in Israel, and the voters uh, vote for the centrist parties. It is true that the traditional uh, leftist parties became very weak, uh, but uh, the most important thing is that uh, the idea of peace is there. People, most of the Israelis are against the status quo, which is the most important thing. N uh, not all of them would like to see a, a two-state solution, but uh, if a, a new government in Israel, like the previous one, just a few months ago, uh, say pu publicly that the, the two-state uh, two solution is the solution, and this is also, no, no doubt, the view of uh, President uh, Abbas, uh, then we can go for it and we will, uh, we, will, we will implement it because this is our selfish interest.